Hi, so today I'm going to be taking a look at a Pivot Cycles Firebird frame. As you can see, I've got it in the orange colorway. It is pumpkin season after all. And this is a size extra large. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to start at the front of the frame and I'm going to work my way to the rear, just going over the various details of the frame itself. So let's get started. Here's the head tube at the front. So you've got the Pivot logo and then the Phoenix logo on the front. This is actually painted onto the bike. It's not just a decal or a sticker. And the quality of the paint seems quite nice. I'd say it's the equivalent to sort of a Santa Cruz or a Trek paint. And then this uses a 1.5 straight head tube. It's not the biggest head tube, so the stack's not going to be the highest on it. So we may have to run some high rise bars. We'll see how that goes. And it uses zero stack headset cups. And at the top, it uses a 49.6 and they just drop in place. I believe you can actually run an external 1.5 cup at the top if you want. And then at the bottom, same again, it's a zero stack and it uses a 56 mil bearing, this drops in place. I'm going to be using the headset that came with this frame. You've got the top cover here that has the Pivot logo. This has a little rubber seal on it pops on the top there and then the crown race is just a traditional crown race with no additional sealant on the bottom ideally I like them with a little bit of uh, like a rubber ring sort of like the Cane Creek ones just adds a little bit of extra protection when it's on the bottom because all the dirt ingress comes in here and here's the port covers so this frame is hollow it doesn't have any tube in tube it comes with some foam tubing that you can put around the cables to stop any rattling. I've heard these don't hold the cables the best, so they can tend to rattle. You might have to use some electrical tape on them to get them to quieten down. I'll find out obviously once I build the bike up. And as you can see Pivot are using silver bolts on these port covers. I wish they'd use black ones. I think the uh, newer frames that they've got out such as the Shuttle AM and the limited edition version of this frame come with uh, black bolts. I've managed to source some, if anybody's interested. They're M3, 10mm bolts, they're countersunk. What I'll do is I'll unscrew one of these and show you what it looks like with the black bolts. Here's what the port cover looks like, what the frame looks like without the port cover on. You can see this one's just flattened out, and then that one just has a little space for the cable to go into. Right, there it is with the black bolt on. As I say, I think it looks much nicer. These bolts weren't hard to find. Uh, I found them on, I think it was Amazon. I think it was about six pounds for a, a hundred of them. So if you do want to change it on your frame. Moving further down, so you've got the pivot logo on the down tube on the side, and then it's on the bottom, a little bit of black and silver. That's more of a gray color, sorry. And that's the same on the top tube where it has the Firebird logo, a bit of black and a bit of grey. And then on the top tube you've got some more mounts here if you want to run a pump or some tools. And then this is a rubber cover that holds, that covers over a hole for if you want to run the Fox live valve system. I'm not quite sure why Pivot thought many people would want that on this frame but uh, they've put it on there. It also comes with this rubber gasket with some adhesive for putting over there if you want to run that in place. And then it comes with some, some little covers for the wire, which I'm not sure if you can see, but just here is where the cable in for the Fox Live valve. Again, seems a strange decision to me, but it is on the frame if you do want to run it. And here's the flip chip if you want to adjust the geometry. As you can see, I've got it in the low setting. All you do is just undo this bolt, flip it around. You've got some water bottle mounts. Again, they've used silver bolts. Ideally, they would have used black, but it is what it is. Then you've got the size in here. So this is just a sticker. You can remove this. And then it has the travel. It's 165 mil. That's actually painted on, so it's fixed in place. 
You've got another port cover for the cabling. Then we move on to the shock and linkage. So obviously I haven't got a shock in place, I've just got this uh, spacer just to hold the frame up. Now this is a trunnion shock, so it's a 205 by 65 and the way that this mounts onto the frame, it uses extended race bearings. I'm not sure if I can get you to see them or not, but that to focus. The race is extended in here, so you don't actually need to use spacers when you're fitting the shock, which should make it uh, much easier to install. They don't have any covering apart from the seal that's on the bearings, so I'm not sure about how the reliability is going to be in wet weather, but fortunately they look like they're fairly easy to replace these bearings if they need to be. And then it uses a DW link, so this is the link here, which rotates, and then you have a rocker which activates the shock itself. This DW link actually has a little rubber cover installed on the top, that to focus for you to stop the debris from collecting here because I know on some older frames rocks were getting caught in here and causing damage hopefully it should be able to uh, be easy to clean out I will say there's lots of space here so mud collection shouldn't be too much of an issue unlike some of the other designs then we're going to move on to the bottom bracket unfortunately it's a press fit but, uh, well, again, it is what it is. Now, Pivot recommend that you use Loctite when installing the cups. It, this frame actually came with some of this purple Loctite. Now, they do recommend Loctite 222 in purple when you're installing the cups. The issue with this is it's a press fit BB92, and if you're running a 24 mil spindle, it's not too much of a problem because you can get uh, pretty decent sized bearings in it. But if you're going to be running a dub or a 30 mil, which is what I'm probably going to be running, you're going to end up with smaller bearings. So the life of these might not be as long as you would expect. But again, we're going to find out how it goes. Ideally, uh, Pivot will change over to threaded like everyone else has. And then here you have an ISCG mount if you want to run a guide and a bash guard. This frame came with a top guide. I'll not be running it because I'm going to be running a, a different system. So moving down to the chainstay area, here you've got the clip for housing the cable if you're running that. I'm probably just going to have to run a zip tie to hold that rubber piece in place. And then here's the chainstay protector which has some extra damping on it to help with the chain slap. And it's got the pivot logo embossed into the actual rubber. Another port cover for the derailleur housing and then this is the port cover for the uh, brake and then it has a DW logo here and then this is actually a rubber protection piece. Moving to where the derailleur hangs, so this is a UDH compatible frame and it comes with the UDH mech hanger and it's just a three piece system. So you've just got the hanger itself. There's a spacer or a washer that fits over and then you just screw in the final piece. Obviously if you've got the new SRAM transmission system you can avoid using that because it mounts directly to the frame. Then you've got the axle. This is a Super Boost 157. It comes with the axle and then a washer on it. And I'll just show you here, it's got uh, rubber protection up the seat stay and then at the front here. Just wanted to show you the rear of the frame so you can see the shaping of the tubes and the way they've actually tapered them in to give better heel clearance on this frame. It's also got really good uh, tyre clearance, should be able to get a 2.6 29er in. I believe you can get a 27 2.8 in. Although I've got no interest in running 27 on this frame, it's going to be 29 front and rear. And here's the post mount for the brake. Now it takes 180 mil stock, but obviously you can use an adapter on it. It can run a maximum of a 203. Now you can technically get a 220 in here, but there's literally no clearance and I wouldn't trust it at all because 
if you, if the rotor flexes, it's going to be going straight into your frame. So it's a 203 maximum on this. Starting on the other stay, you've got a DW link here. As you can see the rubber protection pieces. You've got another port cover here for the brake housing. Then you've got the link. And then moving on to the back side of the shock. So it actually has a little drainage hole here for the water to escape at the base of the shock. And then you've got on the underside here, you've got a little drainage hole. And then this is a mount if you want to run an additional uh, tool. This is a Topeak mount. I'm not sure why you'd want to run a tool this low down on the frame, but uh, there you go. And then they've also got some more bosses on the down tube as well if you want to run more tools there. Again, I'll not be using these. Uh, I mean, it's there if you want the option. I personally think it's a waste of time these are on here, but anyway, they are on the frame. Uh, then you've got another port cover for the brake housing. And then moving up to the top here, you've got some more port covers. And here's the seat tube. It has another Phoenix logo on the back here. And then it has a Pivot branded seat collar. So this is a 31.6 and it's got pretty decent insertion depth on this frame so you should be able to run pretty much any size dropper that you want on it. Here's the frame in a bike stand. As you can see I've replaced the silver bolts along the frame with black ones which I think looks much nicer. As I said I believe Pivot have actually changed this on some of their newer frames so they actually have black bolts in them now but uh, mine didn't so I've just swapped them out. Now what I'm going to be doing next is I'm going to wrap the frame and I'm going to be using some InvisiFrame to do it. And next video I'm going to be doing is showing you the components that I'm going to be putting onto this frame and then I'm going to be doing a full build of the bike itself. So if you've got any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you've got this far into the video, I do appreciate it and thanks for watching.